Good morning. My name's John Prume. This is my lovely wife, Heather. We're coming here this morning to uh, welcome you. We're glad you ch chose to be here this morning. You know the, the signs of Thanksgiving? Besides, it's nice and cold outside. All these treats show up in your refrigerator. <laughs> and, and there was a pumpkin pie in the refrigerator. I decided that maybe I should test this before we take it anywhere. I'll let you know it was good. <laughs> Looking forward to the rest of it this afternoon. Uh, where are we here? Our fall semester uh, is, has begun in the church here. Uh, we hope you have had some time to look at the studies and have chosen one to attend. The marriage and family uh, study starts Tuesday and there is still time to sign up for any of the studies. You can do that online. Although we know that our small groups pray together and others join to pray, there is a special prayer time for anyone available every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. at The Rock. And you're very welcome to join us. It is an incredible time. And may I tell you, there's been some miracles taking place during that time. So you really don't want to miss. October 21st, our youth are going to Canada's Wonderland. This is open to all junior and senior high students. So please register on our website by October 19th. And we know, so we know how many drivers we need. The youth continue to meet every week at The Rock, and they're doing great. Senior high students meet on Wednesday evening from 7 till 9.30, and the junior high meet Thursdays, 6.30 till 8.30. Men, listen up. We encourage you to sign up for Impactus Men's Conference to be held on November the 18th at Compassion Point Bible Church in Burlington. This is a one-day conference that will be well, we be great encouragement to men and help them in their walk with God. Please sign up on the website as well. Uh, one more thing that I see I missed at the top of the list. We're talking about Thanksgiving, and we're going to have a time later on in the service where we're going to be sharing what we're thankful for. So think about that as the rest of the service goes on. Ladies, Oxford Baptist and Huron Park Baptist are joining together for a day of encouragement and Bible teaching by Shannon Lebaud. Uh, this conference is October 21st, and it's designed for ladies 18 and older. Tickets are $20, and this includes your lunch. Um, so just uh, think about that. Go on, their we go on the website of the church, and you can sign up by emailing. Okay, and then they'll let you know how to pay after. Okay, join us at Faithway Baptist Church for Transformation for Generations Fundraising. Uh, it'll be a dinner on October the 20th. Please prayerfully consider who you might invite to learn more about our building project. We hope to share our mission and vision with them about why we're building and how we plan to use the facilities to benefit our community. Right now, we're going to uh, have a video come up here of uh, what the new building is going to look like inside. So let's have a look at the video.
Let's begin our worship with prayer. Father, we just want to be thankful today. Lord, it is a, a day of thanksgiving, and it's so exciting because we know who we're thankful to. And we are thankful to you, Lord. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. And you have blessed us so incredibly, Lord. We thank you for the possibility of this new building and just being able to see um, the rendering of what could be. And Lord, we know that is you. And I thank you, Father, for each person who is here today. Thank you that we are a family and we are your family and we have come to worship you today. And we thank you and praise you for all you are going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 100 is a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let's stand and worship him this morning. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of Walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated, now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved the world.
You can be seated. <coughs> Psalm 136 says, Give thanks to the Lord for He's good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. We want to take some time this morning to give you an opportunity just for a, a short testimony of praise to the Lord for what He has done. As Gwen said earlier, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. And we have a Father who blesses us. And so we have a couple of guys that are going to kind of attend Mike this morning for us. And uh, we'd love you to just say your name. Um, and you don't have to give last names unless, you know, the... Uh, you can do that, and you're not wanted by the RCMP or something like that. Um, so we, we just want to give you an opportunity to praise God this morning. And uh, we also will pray at the end and uh, just pray for all that's going on in our world right now. And uh, we see um, the sinfulness of our world, uh, the, all the things that are going on, whether it's in the Ukraine or Israel and other places. And uh, we desperately need people to, to come to know Christ and see Him transform. And uh, so we just want to uh, give you that opportunity. You just stand where you are. Guys will come by and make sure the mic is on for you. And uh, maybe you've got a scripture or something God's been speaking to you about or uh, just a praise item. Give Him praise today. And uh, in our world, Thanksgiving is just kind of a dinner for people. Um, but we give thanks to the Lord uh, for what He has done in our lives, and we are to give Him thanks. That's what the Scriptures say to us. So uh, just stand where you are, and, uh, and if you'd like to just share uh, quickly this morning. If you get too long, I'll ask you to sit down. All right? All right? But, but what, what do you, where do you see God at work? And where do you see, see, want to give him praise today? It could be the, the simplest things. Um, and uh, just give your first name, and, and then uh, we'll hear your praise. Hi, my name is Brenda, and I normally attend The Rock, but today I'm here with my son because he's decided to start coming here, and I just want to praise the Lord that him and his son are here today, and also that this past year I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and God took me through that journey, and I'm just very thankful to be here this Thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you. My name's Margaret, and I want to thank the Lord for another granddaughter. Um, her name's Annie. In spite of the medical predictions, we waited, but God was faithful. Thank you. Hi, I'm Beth. There's so many reasons why I stand here today that I'm thankful for. Oh, dear. <laughs> anyway, um... I have cousins from um, Grand Prairie. I have cousins from um, Fordwich. I have my sister here. Um, it's a wonderful day. And we lost our aunt last night. She was 100 years old. So she's in glory today, and we give thanks for that. I also thank everyone here that have prayed for me. I'm doing OK. And I, can t I covet your prayers to continue to walk with me in my journey. Thank you. Good morning, I'm AJ. I've got a couple things. First, I'm thankful that my wife and I are expecting our third child at the end of this year, December. I'm also thankful for my grandfather, John Atkinson. He passed away uh, this year, but I got to see just how impactful his life of servitude and patience and long-suffering was throughout this community and others as well. I'm Melissa. On. Yeah, I'm Melissa, and I am thankful that at my school where I teach, at a public school, that we can run Key Bible Club. It's starting this week, and I'm really excited about the year and who's going to come and learn about Jesus. My name's Gloria. Uh, since there's four Glorias in this church, I'm the topping. <laughs> um, I give praise today for the gift of friendship. 
and for the gift of eternal life. Um, I have a friend, a very good friend in palliative care. I just sent a note off to her husband saying, tell Ruthann, when I get to heaven, after I find my son, I'm going to look for her and we'll go shopping. <laughs> and then I said, oh, wait a minute. I don't think there's any stores in heaven. So we'll sit at the feet of Jesus. We'll imagine you, Leonard, playing the piano and the three of us singing around the piano because that's what we did many, many, many Mondays and Tuesday nights over a period of counseling that I had with him. So thank you. Um, my name's Tim. Um, this week we were blessed um, blessed by God through a good friend of ours with a five-day marriage retreat that uh, looks like it possibly saved our marriage. We, Marilyn and I had a friend in London. She couldn't get connected with a church nearby. She didn't have a vehicle. She didn't have much in the way of family at all. But we were able to befriend her and show her the way of salvation and she gave her heart to the Lord. She passed away just a week ago Tuesday. We didn't know about it. it. was no celebration at all, but we know she's with the Lord Jesus Christ now, and we're very thankful. I'm Lindsay. Um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, this year was a pretty hard year for us, um, Lizzie and my mom, um, watching her suffer for 18 years of brain tumor, but uh, knowing that she's home with Jesus today, we can give thanks, but I also want to thank um, just our church family. You guys came alongside us, um, provided us with jobs, and we are just so grateful for the family we have here. Um, we love all of you very much, and I just want to say thank you for you guys today. My name's Henrik, and uh, yeah, we're just super thankful for pregnancy that's going well. We've had many losses, but... I truly believe that God has given us a miracle here. I'm very thankful for a growing church. I'm very, very thankful for a church that's got all age groups and um, thriving. Hi, my name's Hannah, and I sit at the back um, most days, but this morning I want to say I'm so thankful for this gymnasium. I remember years ago during COVID, we had sets of chairs in groups of three and five, very much spread out, and we filled those chairs, but there was not many chairs. And today there are many chairs, and they're very much filled, and that fills my heart because I am so thankful for this church and the faithfulness of this church, and as we look towards the future, we are growing. And so I'm so thankful for all the new people that we've gained over the years, and I'm thankful you're here today as well. Um, my name is Crystal, and I am thankful for all the wonderful friends in my life that have been amazing prayer warriors. Um, I'm thankful for my family and my kids and my marriage and just so blessed and thankful for what God is doing um, in our marriage right now. And I'm thankful for this church and um, just everybody here. Thank you. Well, let me go to prayer for us. Father, we have so much to praise you for in the congregation in this family. We thank you, Father, for healings, for blessings, for your direction. And we thank you, Father, for the ways in which you've answered so many prayers. As we pray this morning, we praise you for the Lord Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, that you sent to be our Savior and our Lord. And for the Spirit of God that indwells us the moment we come to know you as our Lord and Savior. And as I pray, Father, too, uh, there are also heavy hearts here, too. There are lots of things going on in our lives. And we think of those things, Lord, that have put heaviness on us. I thank you as well that when we praise you, you are the lifter of our souls. And we, fa Father, we just are thankful, too, that you have us in your hands when we know Jesus Christ. We do pray for the situation in Israel, the situation in Europe, um, there's so many things going on in Africa and around the world tensions, Lord, we just ask, oh God, that you would just work in people's hearts and lives. We ask too, Father, for our missionaries worldwide that just need your touch today too. We bless you. We thank you, Father, for 
just your many blessings. And we thank you that we can come before you. We praise you today. We thank you. Lord, bless your name. We give thanks to you for you are good because your love endures forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're going to invite the children, grades 1 to 5, to head out, and uh, they can head out to class at this time. You know, I was just uh, thinking about uh, this week that in uh, 2024, it will be 40 years since I was an intern in this church. 40 years. And uh, I, I'm thankful for this church uh, because since 1890, this church has sent out and supported hundreds of missionaries. Hundreds. And through the ministry, not only of this church um, and these missionaries, and some of the stories are amazing, what God did through some of our, especially our pioneering missionaries that we sent out. Thousands of people have come to know Jesus Christ and become disciples of Jesus, both locally and globally, over these many years. And they've been, we've been developing leaders. And um, when I was here as an intern, the church, amongst the, those older leaders that I remember from the church, were um, talking about um, relocation. They were talking about buying pieces of property around the church, the old church building. building. And God has led us to continue to the mission of this church with a new kind of ministry center. Um, and uh, this morning we have uh, some invitations for the banquet upcoming as well. And uh, for you to bring a friend to it. Um, we have a number of people signed up already. And we're looking forward uh, to a few more people to come and join us as well. And uh, so this Thursday is kind of the final day. So if you need an invitation, just uh, slip up your hand. They'll be available after the service as well. And uh, ushers will be glad to give you that um, as we sing, as we continue in worship before the message today. So we just want you to pray about that as well. And then also um, our... Uh, anniversary offering coming up in November as well. We just want you to be praying about that as we move forward uh, with this new ministry center for Oxford Baptist Church. Uh, team, I'll let you lead the next song. We're going to sing our song of the month, which is Christ, our hope in life and death. And I love this song because it talks, it asks questions, but the answer is always Christ. Christ is always our answer. Now, I'm going to be a choir director for just a minute. In the chorus, there is the part that says, Oh, sing hallelujah. Our hope springs eternal. What I want you to do is when you sing, Oh, sing, I want you to take a quick breath and come in really big on the hallelujah. So you're going to go, Oh, sing hallelujah. Can you do that? Let's stand and sing together.
Father, as we come to your word this morning, we are thankful, so thankful for all the blessings that we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask now that you just bless our time in the word and this message as we uh, honor and treasure God together, one of our ministry priorities here at the church, and uh, just bless us, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but I think turkey gets overemphasized at Thanksgiving, so I'm going to tell you a chicken story today. There was a chicken that needed to cross the road for his friend. And you're supposed to ask me, why did the chicken cross the road? It's an old joke. Well, the chicken needed to cross the road to go to the library. And when the chicken crossed the road safely, he got to the library and the chicken was overwhelmed as it got into the great room with all the books. And the chicken just started saying, Wow, 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 wow. The librarian said, shh, quiet down, chicken. What do you want? Chicken thought for a moment and said, book, 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 book. Librarian said, took, took the chicken over to a number of the best sellers and, uh, offered the chicken the book, and the chicken put the book under its right wing and hit it out across the road back to the farm and down to the pond where its friend was, the frog. The chicken gave him the book, and the frog looked at it and just said, read it. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have heard that joke, okay? But it's an old one but a good one, right? And, and, and sometimes we maybe have heard things before, but I want to remind you and challenge us all as a church, especially in these next few messages that we have about our mission and our vision. See, Oxford Baptist exists to glorify God by making disciples who love one another and share Jesus with the world. A number of years ago, when I first came here, we, we walked through that. We wanted to establish what our mission and vision was as a church. And as I said, since 1890, this church has been going on, and, and it's been doing a number of things, uh, seeing leaders and seeing people come to Christ, built up in their faith, and, and then people are dispersed throughout the world, and, and it's an amazing, amazing thing. We want to be winning the lost. That's what Jesus did. He built believers. He equipped workers. He multiplied leaders. That was Jesus' ministry. But this morning, I want us to understand something very clearly, that one of our great priorities is to honor and treasure God together. But we need to ask ourselves some questions. What do you treasure most in your life? I mean, I'm always amazed at these people, and you see sometimes the, the video clip online, and they're out fishing with a big magnet in a river. And usually in some cities, it's amazing what they pull out. Sometimes they're pulling out guns. They call the police immediately. The police take the gun in. It's a kind of a treasure. And they find out that this gun has been used in a crime multiple times, but it's in the river. Or they, they've got one of those metal detectors and they're going on the beach, right? And you see these guys with, with their heads down and then all of a sudden it goes off and they find another tin can. Or sometimes they find a ring. Or they find something else. They find a coin. Or these guys who go caving. They're looking for treasure. They will go to just an amazing amount of energy to get down into these caves to find things. And it's amazing in Europe how many times they just find munitions from the First and the Second World War hidden in caves. Maybe not so great a treasure, right? But we're looking for treasure. We might try to find treasure in some other way. It might be sports. It might be a hobby. It might be the, the collections that we have. 
These are our treasures. But when we do not have Jesus Christ as our treasure, it's very easy in this life to start pursuing other treasures that basically build apathy in our life to even avoiding God. So instead of faith in Jesus Christ, we put these other things in that place. There are those two that have basically are living in fear. And they've chosen fear over faith. And as a result of that, fear gets upon us. And God gives us faith because he loves us by his Holy Spirit. Faith comes with a demonic, or fear comes rather, with a demonic spirit. Faith comes with the Holy Spirit. Everything that God creates for us is his gift. Just the other day, I, you know, it had rained, and then I was just walking barefoot on the grass. How, how many of you like doing that? Okay, not too many. Some of you need to do it more. But there's just something about that for me. I don't know. Brings me back to my childhood and running around the farm just in bare feet, right? Nowadays, they call it grounding or something. We didn't say that. It was just we're running around in bare feet and just enjoying the things of God. So many times I think we get caught up in what's happening on the news and all these other things that we forget about all the big gifts and the little gifts of what God has given to us. And these things online and on the, the media basically are there to help us, basically assist us and even move us to operate in fear rather than faith. God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but a power, love, and self-control or self-discipline, 2 Timothy 1.7. When you're fearful and timid, you know that's not from the Lord. Power that comes from the Holy Spirit is God's love for us. God's Spirit gives us the fruit of the Holy Spirit so that we can experience His best in our lives. And not fear, but faith. Greed is also another thing. Greed, actually, the, there's a great problem of greed within our culture. I mean, greed shows us our treasure is in the wrong place. And Jesus says in Luke 12, 15, he says to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. It's like in our culture, those basically are running by, well, whoever has the most toys at the end of life wins. Possessions never give us a win. We just have to fix them all the time. And God says that greed's a problem. In 1 Corinthians 5, verse 11, I mean, as, as Paul lays out this in a number of passages about greed, it's a very interesting study. Because greed takes away from us giving thanks to God. It makes us basically hone in on what we have that satisfies our soul rather than the God who satisfies our soul. I think it was uh, Corey Ten Boom who, of course, was in a concentration camp in um, this, during the Second World War with her sister. Her sister died there. She survived. I remember hearing her speak live one time, a strong Christian woman. Her and her family had Jewish people in their home. And she said, what I've learned in this life is that I have to hold things loosely. And Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 5 and Ephesians 5, Verse 5, he says, For all of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and in Christ. It's kind of like Gollum in Lord of the Rings. Remember Gollum? As, as they progress through, he becomes so greedy over a ring that he calls my precious Remember what, how he was like? The more he progressed, the more he wasted away. My precious. Very demonic voice, really. And it's easy to get caught up in that, right? 
rather than being generous, rather than being pray, giving God praise in all that we do. I mean, God has blessed us as a church. At times, we, we have difficult things that are going on, right? We have needs within our congregation. I was with a couple this week, their son, who's not with them right now, because of some circumstances, they need some help through our benevolent fund over the next, likely next month. They are now raising three teenagers and they're in their 80s. Can you imagine that? Imagine that. And so that's why we have a benevolent fund. You can give to that. Because there are times as pastoral staff, we know about things that are going on that no one else knows about. And, and that, that we can help people out. That's why we have a, a general fund. You, you help us. Those of you who are so grateful and thankful in your giving, you support a number of families, not only on our staff, but also missionaries around the world and other ministries as well. Because we want to minister both locally and globally as a church. We want to honor and treasure God because God has done so much in our lives. So we, do know, we want to be a church that blesses people. And as a church, our theme has been to grow more or be a community of great faith. And this faith moves us into this relationship with Jesus Christ that changes everything. And so when we went through this exercise, I took the leaders back, I guess, you know, eight years ago through one of the key components of a healthy church's worship and prayer. And we want to honor God by seeking and treasuring him together. That's what the early church did in Acts chapter 2. And through our series in Acts, we saw them over and over again just honoring and praising God and seeking him together because he is the greatest treasure. See, when Jesus Christ, or when the Lord is first in our lives, we have all the treasure we need. We have all the treasure we need. Jesus says in Matthew 6, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. But notice the first part of the verse. In order for us to experience the blessing and guidance of God and the help of God through difficult times, we need to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Why? Because it's his kingdom that is the eternal kingdom. Nations come and go. I mean, if you look at a map of the world and look back through the centuries, how many borders have changed? It's amazing. Nations come and go. Kings come and go. But Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. See, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So what is your treasure? Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 has two very quick parables and two verses. These are the parables of the kingdom. They're amazing parables. We have studied them together as a church, but I, I believe that sometimes we, we need to re be reminded of these parables, these stories that Jesus tells about the kingdom of God. Verse 44 says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. And when a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The parables of the kingdom in Matthew 13 are the sower, the good news of the gospel, will we'll continue to spread, but it will also be rejected by people. The wheat and the tares is there as well. People with genuine faith and people with a false profession of faith exist together between Christ's two advents. Then there's the mustard seed parable. Uh, believers and unbelievers will grow rapidly, and believers will grow rapidly from a small beginning. And the church continues to grow throughout the world. 
The yeast, people who profess to belong to God, will grow in numbers without being stopped. The hidden treasure and the pearl, but then it concludes with the net. Angels will separate the wicked from the righteous when Christ comes. There is going to be a judgment. There's a judgment for believers, which is the Bema seat judgment that we find in Corinthians. And then there's a great white throne judgment in Revelation, the final judgment, where everyone who has rejected Jesus Christ and the gospel will stand before God. There's an amazing message about that online that I just listened to last week in my trouble on Sunday after watching our service on Sunday. And I'm just so thankful to our staff team for Tyler. I call him at 9 o'clock. I said, I won't be preaching this morning. You are. I voluntold him, I guess you might say. Did an amazing job. And you know, that message fit better last week than this one that I was going to preach because this one needed some adjustments. The amazing thing about this, the, these two quick parables is this. First of all, we can be surprised by the greatest treasure. I mean, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. This man finds it. He hid it again, and then his joy went, and he sold all he had to buy, buy the field. He does not, it's not that he bought salvation. It's nothing like that at all. He discovers the, the treasure and buys the field in order to have the treasure for himself. Since the Lord did not interpret this, this parable, a variety of interpretive views are held. In the flow of this chapter, it seems best to understand it to be a reference to Israel, God's most treasured possession, and that God himself sent his son to pay the price for the greatest treasure, which is our salvation through Jesus Christ. In the Jewish background of this story, when you were out in somebody's field and you found the treasure, the treasure was yours. If no one claimed it, the treasure was yours. And Jesus comes into the world to redeem Israel, the people of God. Jewish and Gentile people, we all fit into those two categories. And Jesus comes and purchases the treasure for us. Searching for the greatest treasure is the next thing. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. The parable, once again, is not interpreted by the Lord, but it's linked with the previous one. The pearl of great value may represent the church, the bride of Jesus Christ. Pearls are uniquely formed, and their formation occurs because of irritation in the tender side of an oyster. But there's a sense in which the church was formed out of the wounds of Jesus Christ, and Christ has made it possible by his death and his sacrifice for us to have, be that treasure. And so this merchant sells everything he had in order to buy the highly valued pearl. And it represents Jesus Christ through his death. He provided redemption for us, for those who would believe. And these two parables are in close proximity, the treasure and the pearl. They, they teach that within a period of time when the king is absent, Israel would continue to exist and the church would be growing, made up of Jewish and Gentile people, one church through Jesus Christ. Here we see the surrender. See, when you understand that Jesus Christ and his gospel is the greatest treasure, you'll surrender for the greatest treasure. Deuteronomy 6 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. It's repeated again in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So the last question I have for you this morning is this. Why should the Lord Jesus Christ be our greatest treasure? And you might be younger here or older here. I remember visiting a pastoral friend of mine in southern Manitoba in a small town. We had a pastoral meeting in the morning, and he said, hey, can you stay around for the afternoon just for a little while? And I thought I drove two hours here. I might as well just spend some time with him. He says, I want to take you to a house. 
So in this small town, there's a really huge house. He says, uh, we can't go in. I said, well, why not? Because the owner has been collecting things for decades. He is so scared that somebody's going to steal it all that he walks around in there each day with a revolver to protect it all. He's basically hoarded antiques to such an extreme that he lives in this kind of fear. My friend went and actually knocked on the door and said, uh, how are you doing today? Do you need anything? He says, no, my, uh, my weekly groceries will be delivered very soon. Living in fear because of stuff. Treasures that will not amount to much in, in eternity at all, but missing the greatest treasure of all. Jesus is to be our greatest treasure because he is our creator. He is the sustainer of all things, as we see in Colossians chapter 1. You're here today because God created you. You are not a mistake. You are part of his eternal plan. And all of us who know Christ understand this, that we are his most treasured possession. We who are his people, the church of the living Lord Jesus Christ. And he created us as this greatest treasure. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6, and Malachi 3, 17, talks about that God's people are his greatest treasure on the earth. Did you know that? But that's what you are. It's not what you have in your home or what you don't have in your home or what kind of car you buy or how much you have in the bank account. It's all about what Jesus Christ has done for you. He is the greatest treasure. And Jesus is the only way of salvation, as we see in John 14, 6, where he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes unto the Father except through me. You might say, well, Jesus says something very dogmatic. It's kind of narrow. Well, the way to God is narrow, and the way to God is through Jesus Christ alone. You cannot save yourself, so give up on that. No religious ritual will save you. It is through Jesus Christ alone that you can have this incredible relationship and have this treasure that is an eternal treasure, not something that will rot in a box in a hole. Jesus Christ created us to be his greatest treasure. Online recently, a number of people have been just posting things that, uh, things about Jesus. And, uh, the caption is, things Jesus didn't say. Have you seen that one? It kind of goes like this. Did Jesus say, follow your heart? No, Jesus said, follow me. Did Jesus say, be true to yourself? Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Taking up our cross is identifying every day, every moment of our life with Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. It's not being true to yourself. Or the third one is believe in yourself. Did Jesus say that? Believe in yourself. Or maybe another phrase that goes along with that is you do you. Heard that one? You do you. No, Jesus said believe in me. Believe in me. Or I like this other one that the world says all the time, live your truth. There's a lot of people not living truth today. They got some ideas, they have some opinions, but they're just opinions, they're not the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. In fact, he goes on even further. He says, those on the side of truth, listen to me, John 18, 37. My sheep, listen to my voice. I know, know them, and they follow me. That's what Jesus says. So how can we learn to honor and treasure God? We learn how to honor and treasure God, first of all, by surrendering our life to Jesus Christ. It's not kind of having one kind of standing, you know, you're trying to stand in the world and, and stand in the church and another one. All you do is you're basically trying to sit on a fence. Have you ever tried to sit on a fence? One leg on one side, one leg on the other. There's a lot of pain in that. There's more pain in that. 
You've got to surrender to what side you're on. Jesus said, you're either for me or against me, he said. And so we have to understand what the Word of God says in order to honor and treasure Him. We need to be people who are worshipers, not only coming together uh, as, we, as we do as a church to worship and praise Him through songs and prayer and the Word of God and our response to the Word of God when we hear it. We need to be worshipers throughout the week in our work, our attitudes, how we serve our fellowship with one another, how we pray and, and, and give our time, our talents, and our treasure in such a way that God gets the glory. When I was a little boy, my grandmother would often say, uh, Robin, I know my purpose. And she said it a number of times before I got it because she wanted me to ask a question. Grandma, what's your purpose? She says, my purpose is to glorify God with my whole life. And then she quoted 1 Corinthians 10, 31, no matter what you do, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And right there, it made real sense that my life was to glorify and honor God because he's the greatest treasure in my life. And then she said, when you are glorifying God because you know Jesus Christ, he wants you to become more and more like him, to grow in him, to be more and more like him, transferred or transformed into Christ by his Holy Spirit. And that as we grow in our walk with God, we become more and more like him. And then she said, then... God wants you to influence others around you so that they will come to know Jesus. Well, you have to live for him because everybody sees the fakers. But those who are genuine in Christ honor and treasure God. Honor God by giving him thanks. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. So let's be a people that are honoring God by seeking and treasuring Him together in all things. Don't try to live on the fence. You're either for Him or against Him. Your life shows it, and it's not an hour on a Sunday. It's all week that God wants us to live for him, and as a result of that, seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, he adds all of these blessings into our life, even through the most difficult of times. I had a visit yesterday with a woman in the hospital going through a lot of pain. And she said to me, Robin, I, I just don't know. This pain is incredible, what's going on in my life. I said, so we need to pray about it. And uh, she just kept saying, you know, Robin, I, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. He's transformed my life. She came to Christ when she was 14 years old. Now she's older, let's just say. <laughs> but I said, you know what? No matter what we're going through, when we trust God, he gives us strength to face whatever we're going through. And we had a long discussion about Romans chapter 8 yesterday. And we prayed together. Sometimes God uses us to minister to somebody like that. But after I left, to be honest, I felt more ministered to than likely she felt from me. Because God gives us these opportunities to honor and treasure him with each other as well. Father, as we pray today, we thank you for your incredible love for us. Lord, our response is to you, for you to be the greatest treasure in our life. Father, you know each one of us here this morning, whether we're younger or older. You know the struggles we go through. And, and you know the things, Lord, that you are just maybe speaking to us about today. Maybe we've been living in fear rather than trusting you by faith. Maybe we've been holding on to things so tightly where greed runs our life rather than generosity and blessing. Father, you know the things. Lord, maybe we've forgotten that we are to honor and treasure you and you alone. 
As a result of that, our life is confusing. We're making wrong decisions. We are seeing the consequences of that. And Lord, I pray that you would just move in our hearts today. Help us to repent. Turn to you by faith. Deal with whatever is hindering our life with you so that we can just respond in worship and in praise this morning because you are our good, good Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We can honor and treasure God because he is our good, good Father. And that's how we want to end this service today, this Thanksgiving service, just recognizing what a great Father we have. Let's stand and sing together.
Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful that you are a good, good Father, that you are a holy Father. You know what gifts we need in order for us to live a life that just pleases you because we honor and treasure you this morning. Lord, where we've not been honoring you, where we've not been treasuring you, I, I just pray, Father, that you just work in our hearts. And Father, that we would spend time just thanking you. Father, we realize that we live in a world that is full of fear and greed and so many other things, Lord, that have crept even into our lives. And we ask, Father, that you would just move, move in our hearts, move in our heart, uh, hearts and minds so that we can just see you and honor you with everything. And Father, as we pray today, you know the needs of people around this world, and we just pray that you would help us to respond practically and personally, whether it's a neighbor, whether it's a family member this weekend, whether it's somebody else that we need just to bless. Lord, show us what you would have us do because we honor and treasure you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, it wouldn't be Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie, so we have pumpkin pie outside for you today. How's that? And um, so um, just to enjoy and have some of that this morning. Um, and uh, I think it's out there. Plus, uh, we have those invitations as well uh, for the banquet. They're available out there as well. So God bless you today. Give him thanks and praise for all that he's done. God bless you.